Hey everyone, in this video we're going to continue building our sound system tool. And to do that, the first thing we're going to do is create the data objects that's going to have the properties for the sounds that we want to create. So we're going to use scriptable objects, and the easiest way to think about scriptable objects are just custom asset files, custom files that are going to be in our project folder that we can customize different music or different sound effects or whatever. And there's a concept in programming where a lot of times you want to break out the data and separate that from the behavior, because if we have the data, we can customize different, you know, types of songs or different types of sounds. And we're not worried about how it plays yet. And the behavior, we can take that data and manipulate it in different ways. So separating it out actually gives us a lot of control. To do that, we're going to put all of our data inside of our uh, scriptable objects. Let's, let's start off by defining a type of scriptable object and go from there. And I think a lot of this will make sense as we go. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new folder just for organization. I'll just call this um, SO classes, which is like scriptable object classes. So in order to create a scriptable object, first we need to define what is what can be in an instance of a scriptable object. So in other words, we're, we're going to define the the shape of the cookie cutter before we use it to create the different cookies, right? This is the common uh, programming analogy there. So I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to call this music event. And once you get it open, the first thing you should think about is what are the types of things that will define my song? And, you know, maybe you've planned this out inside of your design, I hope. But if not, you may consider things like music tracks. You may want different audio files that you can layer in to define the song. You may think about blending type, right? That may be another one. And blending type is, is gonna be, do we want to stack the tracks and play them at the same time? Or do we want to fade in a layer, fade that one out, fade another one in, fade that one out, fade another one in? Or like we wanna um, define how the data should be handled just so that you know we, we have more control over that. And the blend type is going to depend on how the designer uh, approaches their setup. Another thing we may want is the mixer support. So we may want a mixer group. Like, do we want to assign this to a particular mixer? We might as well uh, let the designer decide that when they're creating a, mu a new music event asset. And honestly, that's about it. I think we can use this as a starting point. Some of you may want to control volume, for example, of music, but since we're already gonna be doing blending, I haven't decided if I want that yet or not. Um, you could, if you know, you could say optionally add volume. Uh, but you know, this is kind of like a feature feature for me. Now, once you have kind of roughed out what type of data you want, in order to use a scriptable object, it's gonna be a little bit different from our standard script. So with a mono behavior script, which is the default, mono behavior allows you to attach it to a game object, right? Like just like we did with this. Um, if it's a mono behavior, we can drag and drop it and it'll be up here. If we don't have mono behavior, then we're not approaching our scripting that way. If we do a scriptable object, like that, we cannot drag and drop and attach our scripts, but we can get access to some of the common uh, methods that are helpful for um, working inside of Unity. For example, like if I go to the scriptable object API on Unity's website, you can see that we still get things like on enable, on disable, some of these helper functions that are really nice for setting up our scripts, like we wanna do things whenever the script activates and whatnot. We can do a lot of that, and maybe that is very helpful for us to have. So a uh, scriptable object just allows us to create instances of objects inside of our project folder is the easiest way to think about it. So let's start defining our uh, comments into actual code since we have an idea of what we want to do. So the music tracks, these are going to be the layers of various audio clips that we have already exported out and that are already synchronized. We want to define like what is a grouping of audio tracks that go together and that's going to be our uh, layers. So we're going to use an array for this, but you know, you could use a list. It, uh, array would be slightly more optimized in this case since we're not changing it at runtime. We're just predefining it in an asset. So this is probably the better choice. But we're going to have an array of audio clips, and those are going to be our layers. I prefer underscore naming convention. Some people don't. So I mean, I think official documentation is to not, <laughs> to not do it. But it, it's pretty common, at least for now. And I, I kind of like the um, quick view of seeing as long as you're consistent with it. 
Uh, this is a field variable and class-wide rather than local. We're just gonna call this music layers. So this is gonna be our, um, our array of music layers. And remember, if you wanna expose something into the inspector, you need serialize field. Some of you are saying, hey, I thought I could make that public. And um, what, is, what is this? That's too complicated. No, um, this is, in my mind, this is the correct way to do it because we don't know if we wanna make this public yet or not. We just wanna make, we just wanna expose it in the inspector. So i um, gonna use serialized field for that. And we, we can't really see any of this yet because remember, we're defining what a scriptable object can be. We're not actually creating one yet. And because we may wanna see how this data is presented at this point, we're going to define how you can create one of these scriptable objects. And a handy thing you can do is you can put a um, you can put an attribute at the top, create asset menu, open parentheses, and then you can pass it a few things. Um, I like to actually define this just to make it easier on designers, but menu name is equal to, and then this is the folder dropdown or the menu dropdown of how a designer can find it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a separate menu for my sound system. So I'm gonna say sound system slash, and then so inside of sound system, it'll give me a drop down, and then I can choose a new sound to create like as a scriptable object. I'm gonna call this music event. And then when the file gets created, I'm also going to give it a default name, which I think is just kind of handy. So file name is equal to, uh, and what I like to do here is I just like to give it a common prefix and then let let the designer name the rest. So I'm gonna say muse for music underscore and just leave it like that. So they'll create it, it'll have the prefix and they just append whatever they wanna name it after that. So now let's try to create a scriptable object just to make sure that all this is working. If we have all this correct, go. Let it compile. And then if you come back into your project folder, remember uh, we, we're not creating scriptable objects inside of our game. Um, our scriptable objects are meant to be assets that designers can customize before the game begins. So if we come down here, and um, I'm just gonna make it make this in the root for now. Uh, if I right click and go to create, you'll see the sound system at the top. Remember we when we did the little slash thing, this is our drop down, and this is exactly how we defined it. So if we click this button, you'll see it also gives me the the prefix, which is pretty handy. We'll just call this test. You can see how with the newer the newer version of Unity, they've changed the way that they uh, view arrays, which is pretty neat. You can rearrange them without having to recreate them, which is the old way, uh, which was very tedious. So now music layers, you can see with our serialized field, we, we see that here and we've exposed it, but it's not public yet. What if we do want to make this public? And actually, because we want other scripts to be able to look at the scriptable object and see, hey, can I see the music layers? I want to do something with that. We probably do want to make this public, but I would argue that the proper way to do this is not to just make this public because then other things can go and customize the files in your project folder, and that could be bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something called a property. If I do public and then put the type, so audio clip, and then I'm gonna give a name to this new variable that I'm making. So I'm gonna call it the same thing, but I'm gonna do it with capitals because it is public. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. This is just going to say, if you try to access the music layers, then return music layers. So what this is gonna do, this will expose it in the inspector for the designer to use it, but this will allow other scripts to be able to access it but not to be able to change it. So this is kind of a shorthand of saying, allow things to get this, but not to set it. Uh, and pretty handy because we can actually, we have more control with this. We, we can you know do other things here. We could return a certain layer if we want or, or whatever. So pretty handy shortcut. But I, I do recommend separating this out because we don't wanna just blanketly make this public and just expose that however, you know, however people want to use it, that could potentially be dangerous. This is just a shorthand of saying, I specifically want to open this up for people to read it, but not to be able to overwrite it. So this is our pattern here. It's not going to change in the inspector. It's it's just going to allow other scripts to read it. So, you know, I'm, I'm probably jumping ahead a little bit, but that's fine. So the next thing we want to do is we want to define our blending type, right? And so probably many of you are thinking, well, what is a blending type? So anytime you want to assign something to be a type of thing, according to like a drop-down menu is one way to think about it. 
like this thing is either A, B, or C, then you, you probably are thinking about an enum and the data type that you want to use. I'm going to make this outside of the class because I may want to do other things with this. I'm, you know, I'm not sure yet, so I'm just going to separate it out. You could actually make this inside of a separate script file if you want. Many people will do that as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new definition for a type of enum, and we'll call this a layer type, or you could call it blending type or something. Inside of here, all you have to do is put the various types that a layer type can be. So we may have a additive layer. Uh, that's going to be when you combine the separate tracks together, like you just turn them all on in sequence. And then another one you may have is single or some way of defining we want this layer to be active and we want to turn it off and blend the next layer in and turn that off and blend the next layer in. There may be a better word for that, but I'm just going to call it single, unique might, might be another one. So anyways, once we define what a layer type can be, we want to create a new instance of a layer type. So this is the definition and this is the implementation of that. So we'll, again, we'll expose that in the inspector. We want the designer to be able to set it. It's of type layer type. And then again, I'm gonna use my underscore and we'll call this, I don't know, we'll just call it layer type or we call it blend type or whatever. Uh, and I'm going to give it a default. It, it will default to something and, you know, that's fine. But just to show you, if you wanted to default to a certain layer type, like you want it by default to be single or by default to be additive, we're going to assign the default value to be layer type dot additive. And this is just what I want the default to be because in most cases we're going to have additive in the way that I'm building this tool. Uh, but you could default it to something else if you want. And if you ever want to reassign an enum, this is how you do it. You have to access the enum type and then dot and then which type you want to assign it to. So that is a syntax for it. Just remember, we need to create a definition for a type of enum and then create uh, an implementation of that uh, because this is what is actually be changing. This is just what it can be. Remember, if I want other things to access this, we're going to expose that to be a public getter as well. So just like before, we have to create a type for a property. I need to uh, actually create the variable name for the variable. And again, because it's public, I'm going to give it a capital. So again, I'll just keep that consistent, layer type. And then I will return whatever our current layer type is. Again, this is kind of a, I don't know, like a cheat code. We are uh, allowing a public accessor for a private variable. So just kind of a cool little pattern we can do. And then uh, the last thing is maybe I, I want to allow support for mixers inside of my tool. So I'm going to say serialize field, remember, expose it. And then here I'm going to allow the designer to uh, drag and drop in a, a mixer group if, if they want to assign this to a group. So we'll call this audio mixer group, audio mixer group. And you'll see if you start typing that in, you're not going to see anything show up. And the reason is because we need to add our namespace at the top. So using, and I'm going to say, um, I think it's unity engine dot audio right there. So if you type that at the top, you're going to see it's going to recognize our group here. So if we then add our underscore and we'll just call that mixer. Okay. So now we have that again, same thing. I'm going to public audio mixer group then create capital mixer and then just return our mixer. This is our pattern. And, you know, we can actually uh, delete a lot of these comments. Comments are kind of, some people like them, some people don't. I, I like them occasionally just to describe how something is working. You know, maybe I'll leave that one there, but uh, the other stuff, it's uh, like, it's there, the data's there. I don't need to be redundant with my comments. So I'm gonna save that, come back into here, and you can see that we have our uh, layer type, our mixer group, our various layers. So this is the basics of setting up a scriptable object. And the cool thing about that is if we want to create multiple music tracks, we can create another music event, right? Test B. And then we could customize this one differently, right? We could have different layers for that. Uh, different layers for this one. This is how you could customize various songs. And that's why scriptable objects are really cool is uh, a sound designer can come in here and make a new music asset 
And then the coder can just come down here and look and say, hey, give me the music asset. I've already customized it. Here you go. They just drag and drop it in and they do whatever they need. Just a really cool system. And we'll do more customization on this in the next video. But uh, hopefully this is a good just introduction to how we can use scriptable objects to start creating little assets for our tool. And we'll continue to build this out in a future video.